Bawa the hell, but 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 Bawa the
See how tiny this pattern is. I had to hand sew these last two layers. I yay clippers time I love inhaling microplastics. That's kinda looking cool though. I had just barely enough purple to make the rest of the tail. Soft break. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. Hand sewing again. See moment. He kinda looking flat though. This looks way cooler than I thought it would. BRRRR. Smooth. An empty boy. He's finished. This guy is listed on my Etsy because I don't want to look at him anymore. Check the link in my bio if you want it. <laughs> Babes, we got a quick Woo! selfie with everybody. Love yourself, don't hate others. You do what you want. <laughs> Culture kind of crazy, bro. I don't join them. I can do whatever the fuck I want! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know some fursuits able to change their expression in real time? The fursuit maker Sandy Deer combined the building techniques from puppetry to create a one-of-a-kind fursuit. The expressions are controlled with a series of hidden wires that run from the head and to the hand. For example, if you look real closely, you can see when their hand squeezes, the character blinks. Disney took the same idea to the extreme by hooking up automatic servos to their costumes that allows a voice actor to control them from behind the scenes. Keel Space Gator might just be one of the largest fursuits ever created, but do you know how it works? Inside the costume, there's a series of hoops acting as a skeleton for all the fur to attach to. These hoops are called boning and are typically made from either metal or plastic. You can see Adam Savage using the same building technique when he constructs his Totoro costume. One of the main advantages of using boning is that it makes the costume a lot lighter and, more importantly, a lot cooler. But if you want to be icy cold in fursuit, you'll go ahead and hit that subscribe button.
Give a fuck who talk behind my back Cause the bitch knew better than to let me hear Talk behind my back cause the bitch knew better than to let me hear What's your first suit? 1,500. Made it myself, so the base was 200 or about, and supplies, let's say, 160? $10,000. Uh, I'm not allowed to disclose. That's how okay. Much I paid for it. That's okay. Was it worth it? 100%, especially for this kind of price. Hell yes. Absolutely. Every penny. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely worth it, for sure. Gorgeous. Yes. <laughs> Usually my videos cover the most unique fursuits. But damn, there are a lot of really cool ones that too. That first one was like a caribou. This is a bat. This one is a pink party hyena. I love it. Love how this fursuit looks. I have no idea what it is. Love it though. Oh my god, I love this too. No idea. I want to say this is a griffin. I'm probably wrong. It's gorgeous. I actually featured this suit in another video of mine. Love it even more now that I've seen it in person. Purple and pink trash animals. Hell yeah. Look at the star in this one's eyes. Oh my god. Confession to make. I love fursuits with pastels in them. Holy shit. These two are so adorable. The horn detailing on this fursuit. Mm. Okay. Speaking of horns. I think I angered this goat because. Oh god. They're charging. Oh. Just 
Just a gorgeous suit. Do I overuse the word gorgeous? Too bad. It's gorgeous. Really don't see these colors together too often. I appreciate it. Hey, there's me. These guys are all adorable too. See ya. Of course, I can show the most unique fursuits I've seen. This is a goldfish. They're so cute. This is a friend of mine. Their name is Stellar. They're a mano kit based on a jazz cup. It's hilarious and amazing. Oh my god. Okay. I have a soft spot for insect suits. That was a moth, I believe. Dogs are not unusual, but to have a dog done in this style... This breed is very unusual. Again, cats, not very strange. But it's got three eyes. It's like an alien cat or something. I think it's really cute. And then like, woo, lots of colors. Again, big soft spot for the insect suits. They're really cute. And Bash the Pinata was on my previous list, but honestly, they belong here too. Don't see too many dinosaur suits. Or, co I mean roosters. Do love a good bird suit. The really realistic, like, werewolf looking things. This is either an Okapi or an alien. This list would not be complete without Gizmo and Gadget. I believe this is a cicada. <laughs> I love how bouncy it is. Don't see too many insects. And the Furby. Two thousand years later. Six and a half hours later. A few inches later. Day two, day three, day four. A few moments later. One eternity later. Three days later. Twelve seconds later. 328 AM. Three weeks later. Many months later. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. Tomorrow. Tomorrow for sure. Eventually. Uh, 12 o'clock midnight. Do you know what the rarest type of fursuit is? Quad suits are a special type of costume that walk on all four legs just like an animal. They can make it feel like you're in the same room as a life size wolf. These costumes work by using special type of stilts that allow you to walk using your hands. Then, the costume's head is attached to you with a helmet. Using a secret window in the neck, you can see your surroundings without other people seeing you. If you're interested in buying one, you better start saving now. Beast Cub, arguably the most famous quad suit maker, has their prices start at $15,000. And that's if you can even find a maker. Most of these suits are experimental projects created by the owner. Only an expert craftsman can create such a complex costume, so you end up paying for those years of experience. Finally, quad suiting is an event requiring careful planning and a helpful friend. Also, try not to think about your back while performing all hunched over on all fours. But if you're willing to put in the time and dedication, you can create some truly magical moments. Did you know that there are some fursuits able to change their expression in real time? The fursuit maker Sandy Deer combined the building techniques from puppetry to create a one-of-a-kind fursuit. The expressions are controlled with a series of hidden wires that run from the head and to the hand. For example, if you look real closely, you can see when their hand squeezes, the character blinks. Disney took the same idea to the extreme by hooking up automatic servos to their costumes that allows a voice actor to control them from behind the scenes. Keel Space Gator might just be one of the largest fursuits ever created, but do you know how it works? Inside the costume, there's a series of hoops acting as a skeleton for all the fur to attach to. These hoops are called boning and are typically made from either metal or plastic. You can see Adam Savage using the same building technique when he constructs his Totoro costume. One of the main advantages of using boning is that it makes the costume a lot lighter and, more importantly, a lot cooler. But if you want to be icy cold in fursuit, you'll go ahead and hit that subscribe button. In the early 2000s, there was a revolution going on in fursuit making. But there was one artist blazing a trail on their own. Carzel wasn't like the other costume makers building brightly colored neon dogs. Instead, they faced obstacles going out on their own to build costumes that looked impossibly real. Realistic fursuits are a style of cosplay to ask what would a fantasy creature really look like? These costumes focus on realism and are jam-packed full of details to help bring their character alive. Carzel faced many challenges to create such realistic costumes. For example, learning to sculpt is hard, but it allows you to build a base to build everything off of. From there, layers of fur are attached and then glued on before everything is airbrushed to give it its final marking. With years of hard work and dedication, Carzel was able to master their setbacks and create some truly wonderful pieces of art. Their studio, Clockwork Creatures, is regarded as one of the best for creating realistic fursuits. They're so successful because of their dedication and their willingness to go out on their own. Their fursuits help define a style while simultaneously pushing the boundaries for realism and costuming. How much does it cost to build your own protogen? $1,235, or that's at least how much it cost me to build this protogen. While building my protogen, I kept track of every single cost, so let me break that down to you. The single most expensive item was $530, and that was a parts kit from Kyborg Studio. Then we had other materials like fur for $80, foam for $40, and then various plastic for another $20. Next up was the electronics. That took $370 to get a digital face with everything working. 
The biggest cost here was a Raspberry Pi at 100 and then two digital displays for another 80 bucks. Then you had a pile of connectors, converters, and wires that ended up costing just under 100 bucks. The last category is something you like to call consumables. Basically all of the paint, tape, and glue that holds this thing together. For example, we spent $42 on paint, $24 on glue, and then $16 on tape. There's also a few random odds and ends like sandpaper, zip strips, and solder that ended up totaling about 125 bucks. Now, this all sounds like a lot, but when you consider a finished protogen costs several thousand dollars, maybe making yourself isn't too bad. Part four, once you have all the lining glued in, if you're doing teeth, don't glue in the mouth lining all the way. Draw out the teeth shape, then cut it out of fabric. Then sew them together. Sew them, turn them inside out, then stuff them. Then hand sew the top closed. Cut a slit where the teeth go and glue them in. Then mark out where the teeth go, cut a hole, and push the teeth through. Then glue down all the edges. Now for the eyes. I have them drawn out, then sized properly onto paper. I tape my buckram to paper, then I run it through my printer. Make sure you paint the back of the buckram black. Also, I used a sharpie for that. You can also paint them, but I like doing it this way. Then glue them to the eye blanks. Then glue them onto the head. Make sure you put it on a few times to make sure it fits right. And if you have any overhang on the sides, just add pieces of foam to smooth it out. Then glue on some fabric for the nose. Now you can start taping the head. If your pattern is symmetrical, you can just tape half. Now draw on all the patterns. Then mark any big pieces into sections that will lay flat. Then mark the color, number, and fur direction of each piece. Cut them out, then trace them onto fur. Shave the pieces that need to be shaved, cut them out, then sew them together. Here's a furry fun fact. Did you know that a piece of technology a furry made is being used in the US military? The EZ cool down vest is a vest that was made by a Dutch furry and is used to cool down whoever's wearing a costume. The maker of these cooling vests lives with his husband in Amsterdam and they make these for a living. They do this as a full-time business. Apparently their team has sold over a thousand cooling vests in 2018. The retail price is $215 with the cooling packs included. Now the pair doesn't have official military contacts, but apparently a small group of US Navy troops in Japan reached out to EZ Cooldown to ask the company if they shipped to military bases. They sold 20 to 30 of these vests to US Navy soldiers. The Army's cooling system they have is run by like a battery system and requires its own portable power source. It's a lot more bulky and clunky than the easy cool down vests invented by furries for cosplay. According to the owner of this company, they have sold to roofers, miners, offshore drillers, surgeons, video game testers, pet owners, and sports league mascots. They have all written in to say that they absolutely love the vests in their own specific contexts. So what do you think? Have you heard of the easy cool down vests? Are you a part of the US military? Let me know what you think. Bye. Record and see how long it takes me to get into my friendship. First, got to put the padding on. Get that up. Now there's a little hook for the tail. Pop that on. Okay. Now. Do the feet next. <laughs> ah. I'll tuck them in after. Okay, now you've got to tuck the feet in.
behind my back cause the bitch knew better than to let me hear Like para parte 12. 